What is the adult version of finding out that Santa Claus doesn't exist? Finding out that reaching retirement is about hitting a financial number and not reaching an age. Also finding out that this financial target is much harder to reach than you were lead to believe. And it gets worse every year. My dad used to play the lottery. We were poor, but he always played the Powerball, a buck a week. For Christmas, his favorite stocking stuffer was getting us each a Powerball ticket. When he retired and moved to Vegas to live near my brother, he would take a trip down to Arizona twice a month to buy his Powerball down there. It was his ticket to the possibility of financial success. It rubbed off on me a bit, and while I was never a regular player, I would buy one or two when the jackpots got high and dream about what I'd do if I won. Eventually, I lucked into a role in a career that made me moderately successful. Not rich, but comfortable enough that I haven't bought a lottery ticket in over a decade. The other day, I was at work and one of the senior level leaders who I'm friendly with struck up a conversation about early retirement and making it big in the market so he could do the fire thing. I was immediately struck by the memory of my father and his lottery tickets. No matter how much we make, some of us always think there's some magical rung on this ladder that makes us financially successful and will allow us to just kick back and forget all the rest. But that is a fallacy. There's no easy exit for us wage slaves. Work until we die. Make more money. Pay more money. Life's way easier now than it was when I was a kid and was mostly concerned if the box of magic stars had roaches in it yet but it's still hard in different ways, and we're all stuck in it forever. Finding out that someone you have looked up to and admired your entire life is actually a horrible person. Had this moment with a close friend last year and my life will never be the same. You have to routinely think, hey, if I just met this person, would we be friends? If the answer is no, you have to seriously reevaluate your friendship. That's crazy. I said the exact same thing when I decided to stop being friends with someone I'd known for 20 plus years. I thought I came up with the idea, LOL. I'm half stealing the idea from 50 Cent's Hustle Harder Hustle Smarter book. He goes into detail with the need to cut off old friends if they're making withdrawals and not deposits. In my case, my life was effectively ruined since my former friend is a vindictive idiot. Don't give people money. At best, they won't appreciate it. At worst, they'll grow resentful of you, which never ends well. Sometimes there is no justice. Mitch McConnell will get what he deserves. Uh-huh, sure, buddy. He's been in Congress for almost 40 years, and he's been the most powerful senator for half that time. He's doing fine and will continue to for the rest of his life. Even if he were to be tortured to death tomorrow, it wouldn't help the millions upon millions of people who have been negatively impacted from his policy choices. Being a hard worker and good at your job doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be rewarded for it. And the laziest person at work is allowed to be lazy, but the hardest worker isn't allowed a break. This is why boundaries are so important with an employer. Don't give them the idea that you'll work 80 hour weeks. Someone's bad planning or lack of communication does not lead to an emergency that requires you to stay late tonight. Some might call that lazy, others might call that standing up for yourself. There's a balance to be met between burning yourself out for no to little reward and being truly lazy, split the difference and you're golden. I don't know how old you are, but I find the current generation is so much better at this. My generation, boomers, had it drilled into our heads to be loyal to our employer, and they'd be loyal to us. What a truckload of BS that turned out to be. I'm tail end of Gen X, 45 now. My boomer father lived that and tried to instill it in us. He used to make fun of guys who would leave the company just to make more money. In the end, he got screwed over in app pushed to retire earlier, then he'd have liked. Though it's not like he didn't do damn good for himself staying with the same company, just that he could have gone higher if he'd not. Loyalty from your employer is BS. I've seen enough layoffs in my life to realize there's no such thing. It's a contract, labor for money. Don't give them anything for free. 
You don't have to be a dong to your employer, but don't expect them to have your back once your usefulness to them is over. And don't let your personal identity become intertwined with your job. That working harder does not equal getting paid more or being promoted. I learned being good at my job prevented me from a promotion because the company needed me in that role. I'm sorry you encountered this. Sounds like a bad company to work for. Honestly, if you have a penchant for leading, any good company would be looking to put you into a leadership position. That being said, being an excellent individual contributor does not mean that you'll be a good manager. I had to learn an entirely new skill set when I was promoted into a management position. I was not good as a manager at first, even though I was an excellent employee previously. This. There needs to be promotion paths for people who excel in technical skills that aren't good management material. Managing people is an entirely different skill set, and a person who is highly skilled at task A may be a great asset to your company and deserve to be recognized and rewarded, but making them a manager will just make them and their team miserable. Just as you may have team members who would make great managers, but don't have the skill to be truly great at task A. Happened to me, I was great at my job, but I sucked as a manager. I also hated it. I eventually left for another company to do what I was doing before I got promoted. I make more money and I'm much happier. I feel like this is, in many respects, by design. They don't want to promote people because that would imply you should be paid more and it will cost the company money. What they want is to move you laterally so you don't feel like your career is stagnating and at the same time make sure you're trained on lots of things so they can use you in lots of different ways and not have to hire more people. Ideally, they'd keep you in the same position and just keep adding more skills you're expected to have at base level so they can keep you in a position they call entry level and pay you less when adjusted for inflation over time. Some companies have this. They will call it the individual contributor track or something along those lines. It's not just for people who aren't going to be good managers, but also for people who don't want to manage. That said, as you become more senior, doing work as just a guy, inevitably you have to interface with other people, right? Entry level, you do what you're told. Later, you work to understand what's needed, reach consensus, and do that. Later, you work to understand what's needed and convince other people and their managers that they should do stuff while you do other stuff. Inevitably, if you keep rising along that track, you become the go-to guy who knows an entire area and how it interfaces with everything else. And even if you don't want to manage people, you become the guy or one of the guys who leads from a technical perspective. There are exceedingly few people who can just get things done on their own through sheer genius and or hard work to the extent that they make sense to promote to levels as high as a person who can convince 5, 10, 20, 50, 100, and 1,000 people that they need to do this or that. Those people do exist. They tend to end up in jobs where that's recognized. Those jobs do exist, but there are a few of both. At my employer, the Just a Guy track reaches all the way up to Mirror, the guy in charge of 9,000 people track. The amount of people at each rung on the manager side and individual side is about equal, i.e. very few of them at the very high levels, which is to be expected. It is a total lie that people should want to be promoted into being managers, but it is almost impossible for all but outright geniuses to be properly useful at a very highly promoted level without taking on serious leadership responsibility even if only technical. For me, it was realizing the high school mindset in people never end see it in 60-year-olds in Facebook now. It's actually infuriating when you're in a work environment and the people that work there still all act like high school students. Joe's sitting around looking at his phone boss, so I'm not going to work either. Brittany looked at me. Tell her to stop. Frank farted in the break room. You need to write him up for being disgusting. That time period when your relationship switches and your parent looks to you for answers and advice instead them being the one with all the answers. Not sure about that one. Dad simultaneously says, I'm the smartest person he knows and I don't know how to do anything lol. My mother berated me for taking my masters instead of jumping into the workforce at a time when there were no jobs in my field. 
2011. She also believes that because she inherited generational wealth that anyone can pull themselves up by their bootstraps and work a minimum wage job to buy a house. We, uh, don't talk much. No one at your job give one shit about you and you don't matter. Yeah, about three weeks into my first job after college, a fellow who'd worked there for like 15-20 years was killed in a wreck coming back from lunch. Everyone was all shell-shocked for about a month, and then it was like he'd never existed as far as the company was concerned. I'm sure his friends still mourned him privately, but otherwise it was business as usual. Same thing when people have left or retired. The company just chugs right along without them. So I have no illusions about how important I am to the company or how much they care. I had a coworker who was blinded due to the fault of a new hire who hadn't received any training yet. None of us did. He opened the wrong valve and shot a mixture of several acids into the guy's face. It was diluted, so it didn't melt all his skin off. But he had to go through several skin graft surgeries, and he still lost all of his vision. It was only a month later when the plant manager was making jokes about the guy. I told the plant manager that he was a puss and walked away. Amazingly, I didn't get fired for that, but my job was eliminated a year later. The first two things that came to mind were how orcas, belugas, dolphins, etc. in captivity are treated and where the meat at the store comes from. I think these can be covered by just how humans treat animals. Like seeing baby chicks get thrown into meat grinders, alive by the fricking hundreds. It's soul-rending, man. Or seeing thousands of them get crushed in big buckets. Seeing skinned hanging dog and cat carcasses. Seeing extremely intelligent cetaceans that, for all intents and purposes, have PTSD and personality disorders from decades of torture. Seeing Canadian baby seals clubbing. God, that one might be the worst thing I've ever seen. Hearing them scream out, then the screams just stop. And it's a goddamn baby too. I loved nature at a very young age. My favorite thing was going to natural history museums for a long time. Loved animals and genuinely enjoyed being around them more than other kids. Finding out how they get treated and realizing the scale of it altered my soul. There's no satisfaction in finding out the reason why someone became in butthole. You just have to accept that they are in butthole and that there's a time to just stop having them in your life and move on. Growing up, I was taught that people who acted mean towards me were probably going through things in their lives, or had been raised wrong, or just had different beliefs or whatever. But spending my childhood always asking myself if I had done something to them, or if they had been having a bad day, or whatever, most of the time, they're just in butthole, because they want to be one, and there is no deeper meaning behind it. And the sooner you can come to terms with that, and quit associating with them altogether, the happier you'll be. For IT, probably that in this company, your actual code skills don't matter as much as being a pro at procrastinating your way up. I know it's not for most companies, but many I experienced knew a dude who was hired almost immediately for the highest salary the company ever hired for because he convinced everyone in the room where the interview happened how much of a genius he was. He wasn't good. In fact, he even had rage explosions and was seeking juniors to help him out with things I never even saw an intern struggle with. Another company had a dev lead so bad he wouldn't even know why a try-catch was used. He had a big, big ego and would lose it if someone said something that could make him look like he didn't have much knowledge, answering when he had absolutely no answer for lack of knowledge. He would want us to tell him stuff in private so he could speak it louder and claim the rewards for being good. We were always fixing issues he would spread in our code base. He would never allow us to review his code, let alone suggest anything. He was always praised for doing a good job. He got promoted. We didn't even get a raise. I noticed this happening a lot in IT, so it was like, Santa is not real. When I noticed that maybe my skills and effort weren't the way to progress my career, as I always imagined. Well, I had a vein in my brain collapse at the age of 32 and now my brain is fricked. I cannot work my career anymore. I cannot work anymore. I can't really go out anymore. 
The absolute shift to my life and my expectations and what I could do, it's rough. Anything can happen to derail your health. And then, what's next? I also found out my dad was a coke addict my whole life, and that was why my childhood was fricked up. That was a revelation. Finding out God isn't real. Really, God is just Santa Claus for adults. He sees you when you're sleeping. He sees you when you're awake. Don't be bad or you'll go to hell for goodness sake. Like, it doesn't work for kids past age 10, but adults seem to be on board just because it's a different guy with a beard? This has never made sense to me. For me, within the last couple years, it was discovering the celeb charity con. I sort of assumed that actors did charity on the side, or maybe some were just... nice? I don't know, but basically it's a massive grift where, for example, a celeb puts their name to an organization called Water for Africa and goes out for a day of photo shoots with orphans with flies buzzing around them, or whatever, then they go home. They have nothing to do with it, and until their manager tells them about it, they probably didn't know it existed. Then they get to put that charity on their professional resume. The charity might get a little airtime because of the celeb's face. And there is a hell of a lot of tit for tat where celebs in one circle will invite others to join their celeb photo shoots. And of course, little cottage industries that get kickbacks for pairing up the celebrities with the charities. It's a whole huge thing. Finding out that while we get summer holidays and end of year month long holidays as a child, none of that shit exists for adults. So childhood is as good as it gets for that kind of thing. You want to take a holiday? Use up a minuscule amount of paid leave and take non-paid days for the rest. You want real work-life balance? Make your own damn company. The working world, at least in offices, etc., is structured to be 364 days 24-7, always on. It leaves no time to be human unless you force it or think. Having a piddly 3-5 days off over New Year's is enough. I just dream wish that the world didn't try to use every worker like a sponge they need to wring dry of time, outcome, and resources. Also, I'm not referring to public health and safety workers such as doctors, nurses, firefighters, police, etc. Those jobs should be paid the best instead of the worst for the ongoing demand and trauma they have to and willingly endure. Finding out that the government doesn't really have a plan to ensure everything is going to be okay. I grew up thinking they would never allow this or that to happen. That the government was this omnipresent, benevolent entity that oversaw everything that happened in America and made sure nothing egregiously bad occurred. I had no idea that not only is this not true, but that in many cases just the opposite is the reality. Karma doesn't exist. People get away with horrible shit all the time. Good people, with good hearts and good intentions, in all types of situations get burned, and they absolutely do not always get what we think is owed, simply because they're good people. This isn't even remotely controversial. Open your eyes and look around your own life. It's everywhere. Now multiply that by however many billions of us are walking around on this planet. Meritocracy. No matter how hard you try, that job will go to whoever has the most contacts. No matter how hard you work at your job, the reward will be more work. Promotion is given to whoever the boss likes or who has a recommendation. Advice. If after a while you do not have that approval, you will never have it. It doesn't matter if you are a loyal employee. They will fire you at the first opportunity. Ending out that you will never get a home. Not like a, well, if you find a way and work hard, you can but otherwise no. I mean, like, it's straight up mathematically impossible without external help, i.e. parents or inheritance. Or if you live in the middle of nowhere, very rarely one could do it if they didn't have to pay bills and had a really good job. But it's straight up impossible nowadays. The fact you can't buy one doesn't hurt. The fact that it's essentially proven impossible just because of your age compared to your parents who got one for a fiver and a Kit Kat wrapper. That's what hurts. 
The fact that absolutely no one has their shit figured out. The dude with the beautiful home, wife and kids is miserable and or is cheating. The folks who went in on a restaurant together is $500,000 in debt. Just the solid fact that nothing suddenly and miraculously clicks you into being an adult. We all just let it freaking ride. Do something you love and you'll never work a day in your life is really horrible advice. If you turn your hobby into a career, not only will you completely drain any and all fun you ever had from your hobby, that you'll hate it forever, but you'll also realize that your hobby doesn't actually pay very well. To begin with, you spend all your time worrying what people think about you. Then you decide that what they think of you doesn't matter as much as you first thought. Eventually, you realize that they were never thinking about you in the first place. Health Insurance Pay monthly for health insurance, but somehow still get a hundred or thousand dollar bill every time you go to the doctor, maybe even still pay hundreds out of pocket for prescriptions. Adult me was shocked. As a teen and young adult, I just went to the doctor. My parents paid the bill as I was on their insurance and in college. I thought being on their insurance meant it was just covered completely. When I first got my own insurance and started getting them bills, kind of like... What do you mean this magical company doesn't just pay after I already pay? I was shocked. Being groomed from the age of three to be a hardcore fundamentalist, evangelical Christian, and then 30 years later actually studying the Bible, only to realize that almost none of the books were actually written by who we were told they were. That there's historical and internal contradictions everywhere. That there are on hundreds of thousands of manuscript errors through the history of the Bible being copied. And that a lot of the Bible was just borrowed from earlier and older or surrounding religions. Yeah, that shit hit hard. I have a nephew who inherited about 350 k a few years ago. He is now in his late 30s. Never earned that much. When he started work after college, I pounded into his head he had to save at least 10% of his gross income and to put it into a low-cost index fund. He has done so religiously. We also game plan every major purchase, etc. He still rents and is not married. Yesterday we gamed planned his return to school to get some qualifications and state licensing. During the conversation, he said he had 200k in an IRA and 700k outside, a classic case of slow but steady investment. That nobody outside of your family or friends cares about your achievements, and that usually if they ask, they want to brag about an achievement they received. That truth bomb got dropped on me in college, and it helped me get my anxiety squared away a bit, because it felt less like I was performing for others, and more like doing it myself. Still though, I was devastated lol. Finding out that when you get a little bit of money, and buy a house, the whole world is open to you and providing you countless economic advantages like social security not taken out of your paycheck, huge deductions for depreciation, tax shelters, and other tax breaks you never knew about. Meanwhile, the entire working class is living on a shoestring trying to stay alive for another day.